In this video series, I'm going to discuss the mistakes that students make while practicing simple linear regression. First of all, please note that this video or this entire series is not endorsed by any university. I'm an online econometrics instructor and I'm just going to share my experience in these videos. All that said, let's get started with this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the regression equations. See, think of it in this manner that you have regression equations on two sides. So there is a population side and there is a sample side. So let me write it over here. So we have a population side and we have a sample side. And there are some regression equations on the population side as well as on the sample side. So I'm going to write the equations over here. So the equations that we have on the population side are expected value of y given x is equal to alpha plus beta x. This is the first equation. The second equation that we have is yi is equal to expected value of y given x plus epsilon i. Okay, this is epsilon. And the third equation that we have is yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus epsilon i. So these are the three equations that we have on the population side. Now let me explain you the structure of these three equations and the point where students get confused. First of all, take a look at this equation, the very first equation that I have written over here. Note one thing in this equation that in this particular equation, there is no error term. So we do not see any error term in this particular equation. By the way, what is the notation that I have taken for the error term? The notation for the error term is this. Okay, so I'll come to this in a while, but this is what the error term is. Okay, so look at the placement of the error term in these three equations. In the first equation, there is no error term. In the second equation, you have an error term. And in the third equation, you have an error term. And this is how you can understand it. So basically, this first equation over here, this is written on an average basis. See, this first equation over here is telling you the expected value of y for a specific value of x. So when you write the equation on an average basis, the error term is not going to enter the equation. Now, I'm not going to talk about the logic in this video that why does that happen, but this is something you need to be really careful about that whenever you write the equation in this manner, so you have an expected value of the random variable y given a particular value of the x, do not write the error term in this equation. The error term comes into picture when you write the equation number two and the equation number three. So the first equation is on an average basis. On the other hand, the second equation and the third equation, these two equations are not written on an average basis. Basically, these two equations are written at an entity level. So once you have a data, let's say if you have a cross-sectional data, you will have different entities in that particular data. Okay. So now let me explain you how can you understand these two equations. So let's start with equation number two. In equation number two, we are writing that the value that the y variable takes for a particular entity so y i means you are talking about the value of the variable y for a particular entity i. So y i, this is for a particular entity. This is equal to an average value which you get from the equation number one plus some error term. So when you write the equation at an entity level, then you write the error term. Okay, so this is what we have in the second equation. And now let's move to the third equation. Basically, this third equation that you see over here, it's a combination of equation number one and equation number two. See, take a look at the equation number two. In equation number two, you have expected value of y given x over here. And from the equation number one, you know that expected value of y given x is equal to alpha plus beta x. Okay, so when you substitute this over here, you get this that yi is equal to alpha plus beta xi plus epsilon i. So this third equation that you see over here, this has an error term and it is a combination of equation number one and equation number two. So I hope the error placement is clear from here. The first equation does not have an error term. So do not write plus epsilon i in the first equation. In the second and the third equations, which are written at an entity level, you're going to write epsilon i over there. Okay, so these are the three equations that we have on the population side. Now let's talk about the three equations that we have on the sample side. So on the sample side of the story, the counterpart of this particular equation is yi hat is equal to a plus bxi. Okay, and the counterpart of this equation is yi is equal to yi hat plus ei. And the counterpart of this equation is y i is equal to a plus b x i plus e i. Now once again take a look at these three equations and try to understand the error placement. So on this sample side of the story the notation that I have taken for the error is this. Okay. 
So this epsilon i is the population error and this ei that you see over here, these are your sample errors. Okay, so these are your sample errors. I will come to the terminologies also in a while. Okay, but for now you can just call it sample errors. Now take a look at the sample errors placement. So the first equation that you see over here, this is a counterpart of this equation. There is no sample error in the first equation. So you do not have plus EI in this particular equation. Okay, however, when you take a look at the second equation, you do see an EI over here. And when you take a look at the third equation, you do see an EI over here, right? So you can relate the error placement for the sample side of the story to this. So once again, if you take a look at the sample side, you'll be able to notice that this equation number three that I have written over here, this is actually a combination of equation number one and equation number two. In equation number one, we have y i hat equal to a plus b x i. In equation number two, we have y i hat over here. And to get the equation number three, we just put this value of y i hat over here and we get equation number three. Okay, so this is all about the structure of these equations. Now let's understand some more things about these equations. Now the next thing that I want you to be clear about is different notations, okay? So my advice is that do not get attached to the notations. So let me explain you what I mean by that. So in the equations that I have written over here, there are some population parameters that you see and then there are some estimators. Okay, so what are the population parameters that we have over here? The population parameters are alpha and beta. Okay, so the population parameters that I have taken right now are alpha and beta. So alpha and beta are the population parameters and the population parameters are always unknown. We do not know what are the values of alpha and beta. So what we do, we try to estimate them and the notations that I have taken for the estimators are A and B. Okay, so in these equations, these are the notations that I'm working with. For population parameters, the notations are alpha and beta. For estimators, the notations are a and B. It's not necessary that you will always have the same notations. Your professor can change the notation whenever he wants to. So please don't get attached to any particular notation. So let me write some different notations over here which are generally used. So at many of the places you will also see that for the population parameters your professor will use alpha and beta but for the estimators he may not use A and B. For the estimators he may use alpha hat and beta hat. Okay. Or it can happen that for the population parameters, you will see the notation beta 1 and beta 2. And for the estimators, you will see the notations beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat. Okay. It can also happen that you will see the notations beta 0 and beta 1. And for the estimators, you will see the notations beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. Right. So there are different sets of notations that can be used. That's why I'm saying do not get attached to any notations. The notations can change any time. The main thing that you have to understand is the structure of the equations and how it's going to work. OK. In fact, you know, it's not only about the parameters, even the notations for the error term. So for now, I have taken the error term, that is the population error term. I'm using the notation epsilon i for the population error term. It can also happen that your professor use the notation ui for the population error term. Okay, and for the sample error, I'm right now using the notation EI, but it can also happen that he may use the notation UI hat for the sample error, right? So there are different notations. You can also use EI or UI hat, right? So these are the two sample error notations that you will see a lot. And these are the two population error notations that you will see a lot. So be comfortable with different sets of notations. Now, the next thing that I want you to be careful about is different terminologies, okay? It's very important that you should be clear with the terminologies. So, for example, so this y variable that you see over here, it has different terms, right? It can be called dependent variable. It can be called endogenous variable. It can also be called a regressant. So, you should know all these terms because sometimes in a question, your professor can write any of these terms. Okay. Similarly, for the x variable that we have over here, we have different terms. It can be called independent variable. It can be called exogenous variable or it can also be called regressor. Okay. So be careful with these terminologies as well. And when we talk about the terminologies, not only the y and the x variables have different terminologies, you have to be careful about the terminologies that we have for this epsilon i as well. See, epsilon i is your population error term. So it is the error term that you have on the population side of the story. This is called population error term. So epsilon i is your population error. You can also call it just error. 
or you can also call it disturbance term. So you can see these terminologies as well. So for the population error, you can just call it error as well, or you can also call it disturbance term. For the sample error, either you call them the sample errors or you call them the residuals. So be careful with this. If you get a question in which they are talking about the residuals, that means they are talking about the sample errors, that is EI. If you get a question in which they are talking about the disturbance term, that means they are talking about the population error, that is epsilon I. And now the last thing that I want you to pay attention to is notice the hats in these equations over here. So look at the structure that we have for the population equations. In the structure of the population equations, there is no hat. By hat, I mean this, okay, over here, see, this is a hat. So if you take a look at the population equations, you do not see any hat over here. You see alpha, beta, y, x, but there are no hats over here. On the other hand, if you take a look at the equations that we have for the sample side of the story, you do see some hats over here. So for example, you have hat over here. This is y i hat, okay. You have this y hat over here as well. So there are some hats over here. In fact, if I change the notations for the estimators, if instead of writing A and B, I start writing alpha hat and beta hat, then you will end up with more hats on the sample side of the story. So please be careful with this. Whenever you are writing the population equations, there are no hats in any of the equations. When you're writing the sample equations, either you will see the hats on the estimators. It completely depends on the notations that you have taken for the estimators. So if you work with the notations A and B, then there are no hats on the estimators. But if you choose to work with alpha hat and beta hat or beta one hat, beta two hat, then you will see many hats, okay? Apart from these estimators, you will also see some hats on the variables, but please be careful on which variables you you see hats. For example, in the first equation that you see on the sample side of the story, there is a hat. The left hand side of that equation is y i hat. So you have a hat on the y variable over here. When you take a look at the second equation, once again you see a hat on the y variable over here. Now the thing that you have to note over here is that I have not written x hat anywhere. Okay, this is also one of the mistakes that students do. They understand that on the sample side of the story, there are going to be hats. They end up putting hats everywhere. So I'll tell you what are the equations that I have seen students writing. So I have seen them writing y hat equal to a plus b x hat. Okay, now this is not the right equation. You have an hat on the y variable. If you want, you can also have an hat on the estimators depending on the notations you work with, but you do not have a hat on the x variable. So do not put a hat on the x variable. There is no hat on the x variable anywhere. I hope this much is clear. So in this particular video, I have discussed with you the structure of the population equations. We have three equations. Similarly, on the sample side of the story, we have three equations. I have told you the different notations that we have, the different terminologies that we have, the placement of the error term and where to use hats and where not to use hats. So this is what I wanted to discuss in this video, that is the structure of the regression equations. And this was the first video in this series. I hope you liked it. I'm going to upload many more videos on the mistakes that students make while practicing simple linear regressions. If there is anything in particular that you find confusing, please feel free to comment on this video and I will take a look at it. Also, I have created a quiz on simple linear regression and the link of that quiz is in the description of this video. If you would like, you can attempt that quiz to test your skills and I'll see you in the next video.